There you go. Um, can you guys uh, hear me? Yes. Okay. If uh, you intend to follow the um, demo, please come and grab a uh, USB key. There is a um, there is a VM, a vagrant file in one of the folders, and and the other folder has vagrant uh, and VirtualBox installers for the different platforms. Okay. So at the top, at the root in the, in the USB key, you're going to see the two folders, one with the background file and the, the VM, and the other with, um, with installers for your platform for background and, and VirtualBox. And I'm afraid we run out of keys, so <laughs> if, you can, if you can pass them around once uh, you're finished installing. And essentially what you need to do is uh, from, the, from the USB, uh, copy uh, the two folders to your uh, laptop. And uh, in one of those folders, you're going to, to find the installers for uh, VirtualBox and Vagrant for your platform. And in the other folder, you are going to find the, um, the, virtual, the, the, the VM and the background file that you need to, to start the, the, the demonstration. So I'm gonna give everybody uh, five minutes to, to get ready. And since uh, we only have 40 minutes, um, I'm going to start in, about, in exactly five minutes, okay? So if you need assistance with the, the the, the VM, installing the VM, please ra raise your hand. There's uh, three or four people in the room that, that uh, can assist you, okay? So to the uh, people in the, the last row, is that a good size for the, for, the, for the terminal? Can you read the, perfect. Uh, no, we are, we are out of keys, but uh, we, we are going to be passing them around. And essentially, once uh, you have the, the um, VM and the VirtualBox and Vagrant installed, you just need to change the directory to, to where you put the VM and the, and the Vagrant file and do Vagrant up and Vagrant SSH, and it's going to send you into the SSH U to the, to the VM. And you're ready to go. Essentially, you should get something like this, okay? Thank you. One more key here. So again, the, in, that, in that USB key, there's two folders, one with the, with the, with the VM and the background file, and the other with the VirtualBox and Vagrant installers for the different platforms, for Windows, uh, Mac, Linux.
one USB key here available. Here you go. Here you go. Again, if you need help with the with the VM, uh, raise your hand, and uh, there's people around here who's who will be able to help you. So okay, let's uh, let's get going again. If you need help with installing the VM and the and, and the and Vagrant and Virtual Box, box raise your hand, and uh, James and the other the other group of people will go around uh, and, and help you. Um, this is the this is the the agenda for today, and essentially essentially we are going to to cover the three use cases that uh, were implemented in this integration between Nova, Neutron, and Designate. Um, and those uh, three cases are, are, are shown there. Um, I'm, I'm really not going to go over the, the slides uh, themselves a, a lot. I'm just going to uh, show you the agenda. We're going to review some uh, two or three slides, and then we are going to be showing the, how, the, how this thing works in the, in the VM. That's, that's why it's important for you to, to have the, the VM. And essentially, the first uh, thing uh, that I would like you to do is, uh, if, you, if you are ready, um, create an instance. And, it's, uh, uh, and these are the commands that you need to execute, essentially. You need to, you need to uh, export to the environment the credentials to, to, to access the OpenStack APIs. Do a neutron list. In that neutron list, So, so essentially, you do open uh, uh, source uh, OpenRC user one. Uh, once you do that, uh, please do a neutron list, and you're going to see that that uh, user has. Uh, Three, network, uh, three networks. For this first example, we're going to use ten and, ten and one network. So essentially, you need to do a boot command. With, uh, you need to specify the image, the flavor, and the network that, that you're going to be using for, for this boot. And um, and as you can see, the, the VM uh, starts really, really quickly. So again, those are the commands. Essentially, you need to you're you're pulling out of uh, Nova the information you need to boot the the, the instance, and then you're booting the instance uh, using the uh, network one uh, uh, ne uh, network. 
Um, I think we need uh, some help with the VM on this side of the, of the room. So what we did during, uh, during Mitaka, during this uh, past cycle, essentially was, was in, in reality, was very simple. We added attributes to, uh, to three uh, uh, neutron resources. We added attributes to, to ports. And essentially what we did is that, that, that in Mitaka now, ports have a, a, a new attribute associated to them, which is the DNS name attribute. And essentially what you do with that attribute is that you assign a, a DNS, a valid DNS label to your, to your ports. We also added an attribute na uh, named DNS domain to your networks. So with a combination of a, of a port DNS name plus a network DNS domain, essentially we take that information, we put it together, and we push it to the, to the external DNS service. And, and in, in this case, in this example, the external DNS service being designate, okay? And the third attribute, the third uh, neutron resource where we added an attribute was was floating IPs, and in the case of floating IPs, we added both a DNS name and a DNS attribute, a, a DNS domain attribute to, to floating IPs. And with those two together, again, we put, put them together and we push, push the information with, uh, to the external DNS service based on how you configure the integration between Neutron and, and Designate. So the first example, the, the first uh, use case that, that, uh, that we implemented was one in which we create a port, and then when we associate a floating IP to that port, the port's DNS name and the network's DNS do domain are going to be pushed to the external DNS service with the floating IP address that was associated to that port, okay? So the picture looks a little bit, a, a little bit li like this. And, and here I'm showing the complete integration between Nova, Neutron, and Designate, because on top of adding attributes to Neutron, to Neutron resources, the other thing that, the other thing that we modified was the, the way that, that uh, Nova allocates network resources to, for, to instances. And essentially what we did is that, that, that when Nova is creating an instance, and it's allocating um, um, network resources for the instance. It's going to use the instance's host name, and it's going to assign that host name to the to the uh, to the port to the ports associated to that instance. The ports that are that are created by by Nova for that instance. Uh, it's important to know. It's important to mention that when we say the ho the instance host name, it's not the host. The instance's host name is not the same thing as the instance's display name. Okay, the instance host name is is a sanitized version of, of the instance. The the, the 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 name that you the user gave to the to the instance to the instance's display display name. It's a sanitized version, sanitized to be useful as a as a valid uh, DNS label. So essentially what happens is that Nova creates a VM. During the, during the VM creation, Nova uh, creates a port and associates the instance's host name to, to the DNS name of the ports being created. So in the middle of the, of the slide, what we essentially are seeing is the result of that uh, port creation. And as you can see, uh, the port uh, gets a DNS name with a sanitized version of the, of the VM. Uh, highlighted in red, and then uh, the port has a new attribute also uh, name, uh, called uh, DNS assignment, which essentially uh, shows the DNS characteristics of that port. 
and those characteristics being the, the host name, the IP address associated to that host name, and the fully qualified domain name, which is the, the, the instances plus the, the instances host name plus the, the domain name. So let's, uh, let's find out. Um, so let's, let's put uh, another list. So let's look at our instance that it's active and running. So let's find the port associated to that instance by, by Nova. Let's do a port list. Filtering by the instances device ID. And la now let's do a port show for that port. And as you can see, we actually got the DNS name attribute associated to that port by, by Nova, and we, we got the DNS assignment. So now let's, um, let's create a floating IP with that port. where we are going to associate to that uh, floating IP the port ID of um, the port that we just created. And, uh, and we just uh, created the, the, the floating IP. Shoot, I forgot to, I, I forgot a step, <laughs> which is uh, for the network. Let's delete that floating IP. So, so in order to, in order to push the, the DNS information to, to to designate to the external DNS service. What, what you need is that the port has a DNS name attribute associated to it. And also you need that, you need that the network in, uh, th uh, that port is running on, it needs a DNS domain associated to it. So that's, that's a step that we didn't do. So, so let's do it again. So let's do net update. We're going to take the the network that we are using for for that for that instance, and we are going to associate a um, a DNS domain to that network. And, and the example we are using is my domain dot org. So the network was associated.
Uh, another step that you need to take, obviously, the domain needs to exist already in the external DNS service. So, so you would need to type uh, something like that, open stack song create, your email address and the name of the, of the domain, my, my dash domain dot org, okay? In my case, I already did that, so that's already configured in, the, in, in, in Designate. So the very next step would be to create, uh, uh, create the floating IP with the port associated to it. Oops. Oh. What happens when you forget a step in the in a in a live demo? So we are going to attempt our boot again. So our instance is uh, up and running. Let's find the the port that was associated to it. Let's create a floating IP. And then we should do a record set list. And as you can see, the uh, flooring IP information was pushed to the external DNS service with the, the DNS name and DNS domain associated to the port and the network of that we use for, for, for the instance. Are you guys being able to follow the thing in, in your VMs? Okay, perfect. So that's, that's use case number one. In use case number one, we, as, we want the DNS information to be associated with the port on the, uh, and the VM, whereas in use case number two, we want the DNS information to be associated with the floating IP. With the idea, is that, with the idea that you publish that information in the external DNS service, and then you can change VMs. Doesn't matter what VM you're using, you're going to preserve the same DNS information in the, extern in the external DNS service. So let's, so let's do that. Let's create a, a, a floating IP. And in this case, 
we are not going to specify a port ID, right? Because now the, the DNS information belo belongs to the floating IP. Oops, I forgot. So, but, but in the, the, the floating IP creation, we are going to specify a DNS name. And let's call it my FIP. And DNS domain. My domain.org. As you can see now, the floating IP shows that, that it has uh, DNS attributes associated with it, the, the DNS name and the DNS domain. And we, sh we should see that information in the external DNS service. OK? We created a, an A record for, 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 for that floating IP. The other thing that we are creating also is um, we are creating PTR records, uh, uh, reverse lookup uh, records in the, DNA, in the external DNS service for you every time we create that. So essentially, let's, let's open another, in, uh, another, another terminal, vagrant SSH. Is that good enough? And in this case, what we are going to do is to sign in as admin, OK? And once we do that, let's, let's do an open stack zone list. And as you, as you can see, we are creating reverse lookup zones for you. Specifically for the floating IPs, it's the 255 zone, the last, the last row in that table. It's, it's the, 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 the zones that, that we are creating for you. Those zones are created uh, uh, by, by the integration uh, themselves. You don't need to create them, OK? And it's, it's configurable whether you want PTR records or, or not. You can say, you can say yeah, I, don't want, I don't want reverse lookup. And in that case, these, uh, these uh, uh, zones and records are not created for you. And the, the idea here is that, that the PTR records go, on the, go under an admin user, an admin tenant, an admin, admin project, and that's where we are creating the, 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 the PTR records for you. So let's take a look at open stack record set list. Let's, let's look at this specific zone. And as you can see, you can, as you can see there, you have the reverse lookup records, the PTR records for, for the two floating IPs that we created. The floating IP associated to the instance and the floating IP that that we created on, on its own, OK? Finally, there's a third, there's a third uh, use case. And that use case is where you, you want the port and the port's DNS name and the port's DNS domain, the, the, net, the, the network's DNS domain associated to that port, to be published directly to the external DNS service without the need to associate a floating IP. And this use case is one where, where you have a network, a, a provided network, uh, wiring your, your deployment in such a way that you are routing those ports directly to the outside. So in that, in that case, you may be interested in, in, in um, uh, publishing the, the DNS name and the DNS domain associated to the port and the network directly to the, to the external DNS service. For that to happen, you need to have 
you need to create a network. It has to be, a, it, has to be a, it can be a flat network, it can be a VLAN network, or it can be any of the, of the uh, uh, tunnel type networks, VXLAN, v, uh, GRE. The only, the only condition is that the segmentation ID associated to those networks has to be outside the range of the tenant networks. So if you, if you enable the integration between Neutron and Designate, and you create a network with a segmentation ID, as, uh, with a segmentation ID outside the ranges uh, assigned to the tenant networks, the integration is going to assume that you want to publish that information to the, to the external DNS service, and it's going to push that information to, to the designate. Does that make sense? So, let's, let's run an example in your, in your, so, so to create, to create such a network, we need admin privileges. So, so please source, do the following command openrc.admin and we are going to create we are going to create a network outside the, the and in this example this is a simple example I'm using VXLANs that's that's what it's configuring your in your VM so I'm going to create a VXLAN with a segmentation ID outside the, the range associated to tenant networks in, in that in, in this uh, example VM we are use we assigned the range from 1,000 to 2,000 for tenant networks, and we are going to create a, 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 a network outside that range. So I'm saying net create, uh, type VXLAN, segmentation ID uh, 2016, and it's going to have DNS domain, my domain dot org, and I'm calling that network public, okay? I'm also associating two subnets to that, uh, to that network, one uh, IPv4 subnet, and one IPv6, uh, IPv6 subnet. So after executing both commands, you should have something like this. Under your user one um, user. Okay, as you can see, there's a public network with uh, IPv4 and IPv6 ranges. So let's create a variable with the ID of that network. And let's put an instance. And we're going to call it other VM. So our other VM seems to be working fine. Let's see. Yep, as you can see, we created for you the, A, the IPv4 record and the IPv6 record in the, in the mydomain.org.
And we also created the PTR records for you. So there you can see the the PTR record for the for the IPv IPv4 address. And a similar thing for the for the IPv IPv6 PTR record. Okay, it's uh, the last row. As you can see it's uh, the, the record is active. So how do you configure this thing? So let's let's go to the 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 the, the rest of the, the the slides really walk you through the through the commands that we have executed and shows you the, the different uh, use cases. What I want to spend some time with you is uh, how do you configure the how do you configure the the, the integration between uh, between neutron and, and designate. Um. So the first thing you need to do in in in, in neutron.conf you need to do essentially three things. You need to configure a DNS domain. DNS domain is a, is a, is a, 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 a configuration parameter that exists in neutron prior to developing this integration. Its uh, uh, default uh, value is open stat stack local. Essentially, if you want to enable the, the integration part of, uh, new, between neutron and designate, you need to change that DNS domain parameter to something other than open stack local, whatever you want. Okay? And, and, and that way you're signaling that you want to enable open stack lock, uh, uh, the, the integration with DNS. You also need to specify the external DNS driver, and in this case, we are using designate. And this is important. The way we implemented this, we implemented this as a, as a pluggable driver, and with designate being the reference implementation. We essentially defined a, a common API for the, for the external DNS driver uh, API. So the, with the idea that in the, the near future, other people are going to be implementing other drivers for external DNS, DNS services. For the time being, the only the reference implementation is is designate. And there's a uh, there's a designate session section in, in neutron.conf where um, you specify the the URL of uh, of uh, designate. In this case, this is a specific for designate. The the uh, admin uh, credentials that you want to use. Remember that we use a, an admin user to create the, the PTR zones and the PTR records. Those are created for you. And finally, as, uh, uh, we, we specify whether we want a, a reverse DNS lookup or not. If, if that variable is set to false, you are not going to f uh, find the PTR records. Okay, That's, they are not going to be created. And the IPv4 and IPv6, the last two parameters essentially specify the, the zone prefix size for the, for the, for the reverse lookup uh, records, okay? For, for both IPv4 and IPv6.
The other, the other thing that you, where, where you need to change something is in the, uh, in the ML2 plugin, uh, in the ML2 plugin uh, configuration file. And essentially, there's a parameter extension drivers that allow you to configure the, the DNS extension driver and other, and, and other uh, uh, ML2 extension drivers. In this case, we only have a DNS if, uh, configured, but it's, if, if you regularly uh, run a dev stack and configure dev stack with Neutron, you, you will find that, for example, uh, dev stack uh, confi configures uh, port security also in that, in that extension. And those are, the, those are the knobs, those are the parameters that you need to play with to, to configure the integration between Nova, Neutron, and, and Designate. All this information is contained in the in the in the slide set, in the in the in the, in the, in the, the presentation. And uh, the other thing that is important to mention <coughs> is that we did our best to we did our best to <coughs> document this. So there's we added a chapter to the to the OpenStack networking guide. And all this information is explained in, in detail. Each, each use case is uh, explained in detail in that, in that networking guide. <clears throat> the last thing that I want to mention in this uh, presentation, the very last thing I want to mention, is that it's, uh, the, it's uh, some performance consideration. And this is for, uh, for use case number three. Use case number three is that use case where you publish the port and the, the port information directly to the external DNS service. And in that case, if, neut if in Neutron the port binding extension is configured, when you create the instance, the uh, Nova is going to execute one, one additional port update operation on each port associated to the instance, OK? Um, therefore, before adopting this uh, use case widely in, in your deployment, please um, make sure that you take this into consideration and see what, what the, the impact might be in your, in your uh, Nova, in your, your instance boots uh, um, times and, and, perf and expected performance. In the testing we have done, it's, it's really non-significant, but, but I, uh, that, 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 that changes from, from SLA to SLA. So, so, let, so make sure that, that you take that into consideration. And again, this is mentioned in the, in the, in the documentation that we created for, for this. So I think we are right at time. So if you have any questions, I'll stay here for as long as you guys need. Come to the front and I'll try to answer all your questions. Thank you so much.